Hello friends, my name is Nyang with a hat and welcome back to my channel. Hello. As you guys know, right now I'm in London. London is a big city with so many things to do. Whenever I tell people that I'm not from London, they always ask me, what am I doing here? And honestly, I always tell them that I have no other choices besides being here. Many of you know that I was born and grew up in Vietnam until I was 16 and then I decided to study abroad in the US. When I about to graduate from university, certain president became president and he made it so hard for international students like me to get a job. All the big companies I applied to don't take international applicants for their entry level job. So I was left with this huge uncertainty but if you know me, you know that I thrive on uncertainty but this this is the biggest uncertainty that I have in my life. I look left and right. All of my friends have internship jobs, but I have nothing. Half of me, I want to go back to Vietnam because I have my family and friends there to support me. Half of me, I want to stay abroad because my parents spend so much money for me to study abroad. So I want to get back some money for them. And then this job posting magically appeared. Or should I say that my professor sent an email to all the students in the school saying that he received an email from a UK company. They want to take US professionals or US students to intern there, to work there. And then I apply. Miraculously, I passed three rounds of interview and I became the only person actually to get the internships and come here to the UK, to London. So I actually went to London four years ago for an internship and that was when my commitment to the UK started. So today, I'm going to take you guys with me to relieve my first day in London as an intern when I was 19 years old. Are you guys excited? I'm so excited. Today, I will try to wear my old clothes which I have with me since 2019. When I was 19, I was such a huge nerd. Now that I'm not a huge nerd right now, but back then I was just studying and working. And of course, I didn't have my YouTube channel. I didn't care a lot about what I wear. I think somebody complimented me on the street that this shirt looks good, so I keep wearing it. And then this jean jacket from American Apparel. This is an impulsive purchase. I remember hanging out with my friends. We were gonna do karaoke until 3 in the morning. And we were walking down the street. We saw this stores closing down. We went inside and bought this jacket. I think this cost me $150. <laughs> I know it is a lot of money. So I was actually hating myself for buying this jacket for like 2 or 3 days afterward. But it's fine. This is one memory. I added in a turtleneck because it's kind of cold. And now we're ready to go. I'm not sure if you guys are the same as me or not, but although I live abroad for a long time already, I'm still very nervous whenever I go somewhere different. Let's go. You will think that I travel a lot, but when I first came to the UK, it was only my third time going out of Vietnam and my first time in Europe. So I was really nervous. Okay, I am officially here. Let me see if I still remember the shortcut. You know, when I first came to London, I got lost so, so much. I remember this is the first place that I live in when I first arrived in the UK. The company van picked me up at the airport with my two big suitcase and they drove me here directly. It was very convenient. I was excited to be in London. Although my flight was 18 hours, I couldn't sleep. And when I got here, I was so tired, but I still could not sleep. My body was physically tired, but mentally, I was like, in the heaven, I was up here. I could not sleep anymore, so I decided to walk around and get some food. You know, the first challenge when you got to a new country is knowing where to get food. I didn't know where to get food, so I went on Google and searched groceries near me. And this, right next to my apartment, is the People's Kitchens. It is like a small grocery store that sells a lot of stuff. Let me go inside and find something to eat. I think when I first got here, I didn't know what to eat, so I decided to buy instant oatmeal. It's like the bag of oatmeal that you can just pour hot water in and put some fruit in and eat together. I bought that one, so let me see if I can still find it. Excuse me, do you guys have hot water for me to pour this one in and eat it immediately? No, okay, thank you, that's okay. Because I don't have hot water, so I'm gonna buy something to eat with the fruit instead of porridge. You know, so maybe yogurt. Okay, so I bought yogurt and raspberries. This area has a lot of people walking around, so I'm very nervous right now. So please, <laughs> please don't mind me if I sharp cut all these videos because I have to pause a little bit when people walk around because I'm really nervous. So let me tell you briefly about this apartment while eating my yogurt. So this is yogurt and they didn't give me a spoon. There's no spoon, so I have to eat it by drinking it and then put a little bit of fruit in my mouth. 
It's not even drinkable, it's really thick. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go to the cafe near here and ask for a spoon. Okay, let me be brave for a moment. Okay, I got a spoon. Let me eat this first, I'm so hungry right now. This is the yogurt. This is what I expect. This is vegan yogurt. It's not dairy yogurt. I just came in and bought a random yogurt. But the total of these juice is six pounds. Can you believe that? It is so expensive in central London. Okay, so let me tell you briefly about this apartment. This apartment is in Holborn, specifically Russell Square. It is right in central London. And the good thing about it is that it is totally free. I was and still am very grateful for these internship opportunities. It is a paid internship, but they also pay for housing, return flight, and transport from the airport. So I feel like I got paid to do everything. It's really good. Also, I got to stay in this apartment for three months and I asked them how much do I need to pay for one month if the company didn't pay for me. And they said it's about 5,000 pounds per month. I'm like, what? That is a lot. I can't, there's so many people here. After I had breakfast, I want to walk around to discover the areas. I want to see the shops, the restaurants, because I'm going to be here for three months, you know? So first of all, let me take you to my favorite shops. I love stationery shop very much. They sell all kind of thing, from pen, pencil to toys. I love going there and buy random toys to go to my apartment and play. I also remember buying a lot of cards and handwriting them to give to my co-workers who I work with during the internships. That took a lot of effort. It was a nice gesture and I received so many emails saying thank you. Oh. I remember I was very into coloring books, so I bought lots of coloring books and then colors. Oh my god, this is a Harry Potter coloring book. Should I get back into coloring books? This is the first GP that I went to when I was sick. GP stands for General Practitioners. They are more like doctors and medical centers. This is a very nice and safe area to live in. This whole street is filled with boutique shops and restaurants. But actually, I have never tried any restaurants or bought anything on this street because they are too expensive. Believe it or not, when I first came here, I always cooked because the prices here in London were so shocking to me. I barely went to any restaurants, but whenever I went, I went to this place. There's so many pigeons. Look at those chickens. <laughs> Look at those chickens. Itsu is like a Japanese chain's restaurant. The food is not cheap, but the special thing is half an hour or an hour before the store closed, the food got 50% discount. Sometimes they even give food out for free. So it's really cheap. Actually, when I just arrived here, I googled cheap food in London and it to show up. And also, it's kind of funny because an hour before the store closed, there's a whole line of people waiting for here. Yeah, like if you got in late, there will be no food left for you because everybody would just take, take and take. <laughs> there are a lot of restaurants and stores around here that I want to try them out, but I haven't tried them out because again, they're very expensive. But there's one particular store that I want to try out very much and I want to try out now, which is the ice cream store. This sells ice cream and cookies, so it's like a sandwich like this. Okay, should I get it now? Can I have one cookie and one scoop of ice cream, please? And I get the matcha and white chocolate and the sea salt caramel ice cream. It is a good idea to order sweet cookies and salty ice cream because they kind of like compensate for each other, you know? Mm. Look, look. It's been a while since I sit down and eat ice cream and enjoy the view, so I always do something. <laughs> I'll skip this an 8 out of 10. It is really delicious. So yeah, this is the first area in London that I live in. I really like it. The area is really nice. I definitely will come back if I can afford it. <laughs> If you watch more than one of my videos, you will know that I absolutely love Harry Potter. I use a lot of Harry Potter reference in my videos, but do you know that I just got into Harry Potter quite recently, about four years ago, when I was an intern here. As I mentioned earlier in my videos, I was the only intern in my intern class. Usually there was around five or ten interns that can talk and hang out with each other, right? But I was the only one, so I got really lonely. And also the weather from September to December when I was interning wasn't really great. It was gloomy and rainy basically every single day. So seasonal depression plus loneliness was not the best combinations. It really made me question if London was the best option for me because I was so sad. What I did was I went online and searched for any books or movies that take place in England or specifically London and I found Harry Potter. In like a weekend, I finished all seven movies of Harry Potter. 
and during that internship, I finished every book of Harry Potter. That's how fast I got into it. And I went on a walking tour of the places that Harry Potter got inspired. And the first Harry Potter related place that I visit is the King Cross Station. King Cross Station was only 15 minutes walk away from my apartment, from the apartment that I show you. So I came here and yeah, let me show you around. This is the outside of King Cross Station where Ron and Harry drive that flying car. The weather is not the best, it is rainy right now, but this is a very big station. Let me go inside and find platform 9 and 3 quarters where everything begins. Excuse me, where can I find platform 9 and 3 quarters? The Harry Potter place? Oh, that way? Okay, thank you. It's gotta be between platform 9 and 10, right? Okay, oh, I think I found it. There's a long queue of people who want to take picture with the trolley. But I'm not gonna be in the queue because it seems like it's gonna be forever. Also, I'm going by myself. Nobody's gonna take picture of me, you know? And it's kind of awkward to put the camera down. i like, hey! <laughs> but let me go inside the Harry Potter shop to get something. Also, this is where I got my Harry Potter one when I first came here. I love it in Vietnam. <laughs> I'm so sad right now. When God, I'm love you also. Should I get a Dobby? I always wanted a Dobby. It's so realistic though, but it's 30 pounds. It's a bit expensive. Words cannot express how grateful I am for Harry Potter. I had a really tough time during my internship, not because of my performance, but because I felt very lonely. When I read Harry Potter, I feel like I had friends with me who went through the same thing. Well, like not all the sad stuff, but more like transitioning to a new environment. If you guys didn't know, I'm a Slytherin. <laughs> look at me, I'm a Slytherin. I do look like a Gryffindor, but I am a Slytherin, okay? Besides Harry Potter, I also found another reason to stay in London, which is most museums here are free and they are very huge. On my first weekend here, I went to the British Museum and I spent six hours there. I didn't even finish the museum. So right now, I'm gonna take you guys to the British Museum. The British Museum is only one stop away from King Cross Station. It is really convenient. That's why I love London because you can take the underground to go anywhere. Oh no, it is raining harder now. <laughs> While we're walking to the British Museum, I want to offer you my two cents advice. If you don't like where you're staying right now, find reasons to like it. There are a lot more reasons than you think. And also, if you cannot find any reasons, at least you were born there. Your families were there. It's special enough. Right? Oh, not really, if you don't like it. Oh, move, I don't know. <laughs> I know it is a privilege to be able to move and to travel. You'll get there. We'll get there someday. You know, we can do it. <laughs> I want to travel more. We at the British Museum already, and my hair is so wet. I feel like I've shown you many times in my vlog the British Museum already. I've been here three times, but today I'm gonna show you the exhibitions or the places that I have not shown you before. Alright, let's come in. Actually, come back this way because this is backlit. Look at the lighting. Oh! Yeah, the lighting this way is not as good as the other way, so I have to turn around. See? My dedication as a YouTuber. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh my god, I'm so tired right now. I wanna go to the British Museum. See, the lighting is really bad. I wanna go to the British Museum. I just open my book and just read. This is the back entrance. I've never been to the back entrance before. I've been to the front one. So right now, I'm gonna use the back entrance. <laughs> back entrance. Here we are. We're at the big space. Look at this. It is huge. Whenever I go to museums like this, I tend to get really overwhelmed because they are so big and there are so many things to read. So I wanna take my time and relax and read slowly rather than rushing myself. And that was exactly the reason why I spent six hours when I first came here because there was a lot of things to read. But I don't know. I don't think I retained much of it because there was a lot of information. I always go this way whenever I visit the British Museum. It is so crowded today, I think because this is Sunday, so there are many tourists. But since I live here, I think I'll come back another day. I'm so small compared to the column. Look, they are very big. Can you believe that you can get inside this big museum for free? I love it so much. <laughs> when we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. 
Side by side, our fears are done. Right now I'm at Chinatown. I wanna get some food. The restaurant that I want to eat is closed. It's opening in April. So right now I'm gonna eat my second favorite restaurant. It is not really a restaurant, but more like a place that you buy food and you eat at your home. Yeah, so it's like a to-go. I got the food, so now let's go home. So right now I'm eating duck rice at Chinatown. This is my second favorite restaurant in Chinatown because it's so cheap. Chinatown is like a place of comfort for me. I found Chinatown the second week that I stay in London and I love it so much. It reminds me so much of home. And I think that's the closest things to home that I can get in London because there's so many restaurants and good food, nice people, there's bubble tea, there's Asian snacks, Asian market and everything. I always recommend people to go to Chinatown for good food in London. This whole box of duck rice is only seven pounds. This is really hard to find with that price in London. And it's hard to find duck as well. <laughs> Let alone cheap duck rice. Great food for Chinatown. I'm at home now. After relieving my first day in the UK, I felt a lot of joy and nostalgic. And honestly, I realized that the two things that I liked the most when I first came here was lack of connections and lack of financial means. When I first came here, I didn't have a lot of friends. I had nobody around me. But now I have a lot more friends. I have people who listen to me when I'm sad and who want to share my happiness with me when I accomplish something. And also when I first came here, I didn't have a full-time job yet. It was just an internship position and my future was very uncertain like I told you in the beginning of the video. But now I have a full-time job. I've been doing it for three years. And also I have a side job with you guys. So I'm very grateful for all of that. I'm able to travel and take you guys with me as well. Just overall, I have more budget to do things and I'm very grateful for it. And also it makes me emotional how much I've grown during the past three years. They were not the easiest years of my life, but I've grown a lot. And I'm glad that you guys were with me during the happy as well as the sad times. And thank you very much for sticking around. I expect there will be more changes in the futures, actually coming very soon, but Please stay here. And that is the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching it. I hope that you know more about me as well as my journey in the UK. My first day in the UK. If you are somebody who are uncertain about their futures, looking for their journey, looking for their path, please be patient. It'll be coming very soon. The future will sort itself out. Alright? And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good day. Have a good week ahead. See you. Bye-bye.